Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on my channel. Yes, I've come back from the dead. Four months ago I died and I was like, I really want to upload a video now because, uh, you know, I got, I passed 200 subs and my last video was an absolute banger. And so I thought that I should start uploading again. To be honest, I was really busy with online class and just anything in general. A lot of stuff happened. So today I found my free time and I thought I should start editing. So the topic of the video is that I joined a YouTuber Rise of Nations tournament. So, so in Sordi Arden's Discord, he posted an announcement saying that he has joined a Rise of Nations YouTuber tournament, and he posted the invite link to the server itself. And so I was like, hmm, maybe I'm I'm gonna join. Maybe maybe I'm gonna spectate because they're probably not adding any more people to play. And so I clicked, and already a lot of people were there, a lot of YouTubers. And so then I asked the host Brad Bradificus, and if I could if I could join. And he was like, okay, we can make more slots for more people. Yeah, you can join. And I was like, already guessed. Because, what? I've joined the Rise of Nations YouTuber tournament at the time. Because I didn't talk too much with other Rise of Nations YouTubers. Except for Sardi Ardan. So, this was pretty cool. And, yeah, basically I joined. And you can see the bracket right here on the screen. The starter bracket of every YouTuber that is going to play and was going to play. So, yeah. By the way, all their YouTube channels are going to be linked down in the description. If you haven't already subscribed to all of them, please do, because they're all cool people. And I enjoyed my time in this server. I'm still gonna, though. <laughs> so I'm gonna show all the clips of the rounds that I've played. And I'm going to describe everything that was going on and happening. And it's not just gonna be sped up with no commentary. So yeah, here you go. And so now we finally get into the game. So the first round was me versus Brainlet. I was Thailand and he was going to be Vietnam. And we already started playing. So we had two years of preparation time till we started to go to war again. And so I already had like a little notepad filled with tactics on what I was going to do to beat him and what, like basically get any trades I can or how many resources I should take for each trade all of that stuff and so my main focus was to make an aircraft carrier but I think because at the end of the game I couldn't really make an aircraft carrier because well I was Thailand and I wasn't good enough or well I didn't have an the capabilities to make one and so I really just went for electronic factories at first and some steel factories to try and get some tanks maybe and a lot and a really really good income so I can get a good army and um I also was trying to save up as much manpower as I could for this game because manpower is really key because I was playing against a much stronger country like I was Thailand and Vietnam is like has like 10 million more people in it in run so this was already very hard and I thought that I should play it very defensively and tactically so I can get as much casualties and hopefully he can run out of manpower but the thing is he also has socialism which basically boosted his factory output and that was gonna be really really tricky so already we were just Preparating, and I was looking like sometimes I was looking at what Brain Ron was doing, and well, he was barely making any factories, or well, he wasn't making any factories at all. He made some troops, I don't know what he was doing the whole time, but I think at some point he um, disconnects from the game, I think, or I'm not very sure. <laughs> don't take my word for it, 
Okay, so now we had to declare war because the deadline was up. It was already two years in game. Our preparation was already done. I had a lot of stuff here protecting Bangkok. A lot of factories. And I saw, I basically looked at his troops. And he had massive amounts of troops lined up. But he had no factories. And I was like, making factories is very, very, like, very recommended. And so he was trying to attack those troops of mine. And I basically tried to dodge them. And then I started getting the, some troops that he sent after my capital. And I started really bombarding them with artillery and my destroyer. And then I started to bombard his troops on South Vietnam there. And then I started to use artillery on his troops that killed my troops while they were attacking his capital. And so he really fell for that easily. 40k troops on like 31 divisions, I think it's there. That, that massive, that was massive for me. Because then I could just go to his capital. And for some reason, he didn't attack me at all. He had so many troops. I think he stopped because of, well, stress maybe. Or he didn't believe in himself. And I felt kind of bad, you know. But I guess I had to win and do what I had to do. So yeah, basically, I was very close to taking the capital, but then he attacks my troops there. And now I saw that my, that he took all of the cities that my factories were in, and so I started retaking my cities. And then I flanked him with my tanks and some of my infantry, and then I took his capital. Yeah, it wasn't really that long, but you know, it wasn't that hard, but obviously good game i think he just came down from the pressure and he lost this first two round and so here's my second round of the first match against brainlet so this time i was vietnam because we had to switch countries every other round and this time I was vietnam and i already had the upper advantage here in the game so I thought I think that I already had this in the bag because Vietnam is just so much more powerful than Thailand one because it has a much higher population and two socialism because it'll give you more manpower and you're gonna have more factory output which was a huge 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 boost for the game because this is a competitive game okay and uh, every time i get i got to the capacity of my manpower uh, i would use i would make troops because i didn't want to lose on manpower to be gained at that time and so basically again like last round i was trying to get an aircraft because now it was much more doable because vietnam is so much stronger and the factory output really helps a lot so that was really my main goal because I knew I was gonna do really well but one thing that I did not calculate is that I didn't know too much about aircraft nor did I make any before this <laughs> so I was quite inexperienced with it and then I just went on with it because I didn't think that there was it was gonna be that hard to know how to use an aircraft and so I just went on with it and I saw that he started making tanks, so I saw that he was going for the more attacking approach. Maybe he was trying to get rid of my bigger cities first so I could become really weak, maybe. But he made a little bit of factories on top of Bangkok, and it wasn't as much as I did. And I thought that that wasn't going to be enough for him because, well... I mean, I'm so much stronger than Thailand, and he was already at the disadvantage. And then, just kept going, kept making more factories, kept making more troops, kept making tanks. And I started to edge closer and closer to that aircraft, and I already made it. So, this is what I was saying. I was very unprepared. I did not know that submarines could beat aircrafts i thought aircrafts were like invincible or something like that and i made a huge mistake i didn't even know but i got bangkok like 
clear. And so I marched my tanks all the way over to Bangkok. Then they got attacked. And so I started to flank the enemy... Well, units. And so then he started to try and get my planes with anti-air, but... I think, because he didn't have enough manpower, he couldn't retaliate, and so I got Bangkok. And it was... Quite an easy victory for me, but... Very good game, Brainlet. Hopefully next time we do this tournament and you will do much better and you'll have a different opponent and we both do much better. <laughs> so after my first match win against Brainlet, this is how the bracket looks like and now I'm paired up against Doge Boy. See how this turns out. And so here goes the first round of my match against Doge Boy. So this round, I was Spain and he was France. And we did try a bit of times before, but it, we could never finish a match because something kept happening. And so here we are. So straight away, what I'm trying to do is get a huge economy because I've been seeing how Doge like makes a lot of electronic factories to make a lot of tanks. And I think that's the weakness for me because I really couldn't counter his tank spam. He had like 8,000 tanks at the start and then we'll keep making them probably like 16,000 in total in one match. But yeah, at first I was trying to make it so like I could maybe do a front line. But I was like, this isn't gonna protect me against his tanks. Plus we don't have like two years preparation time. It's not enough to, well, be able to make a huge line that can really be any tank division and, well, any tank division raid. And uh, so this is what I was doing, basically. I was also trying to make Navy this time because he was using aircrafts a lot, but his Navy was, like, also really strong. And I don't, like, he keeps going to the point where he's like in deficit, like he was losing money. And I think that in this round, I should have done that too, as in make a really, really big army, no matter what. Even if I lose a little bit of money, I should just like bank it. Um, but yeah, so here I was making tanks already, trying to use the tank method and stop him from beating me again. <laughs> Um, so, still, here, I'm making more factories, more and more factories, because you can never have too many factories in a competitive Rise of Nations match, and so we were still going, and I started to make the Navy there, and I think I bought the aircraft carrier, like, around this time, or something like that, and I was trying to protect Madrid as well as well as possible because I put like artillery there, I had tanks, infantry, but then I sent out some artillery t with an entry infantry division to maybe try and stop the tanks, but that, those, that number of tanks is just too much to be able to, you know, even stop it. And now my navy was glitching, it wasn't moving every time, and so he kept following all my navy and he knew that he was gonna win but yeah every time my aircraft carrier or some of my navy would get stuck in those in the islands in the mediterranean and it was so annoying but um i couldn't do anything else and so he started raiding everything now basically he was going all in he took most of my cities most of my big cities and i was already yeah really quickly um definitely wasn't my best match and now we move on to the second round. So now here's the second round of the second match against Doge. This time I'm France and he is Spain. So straight away, we both start making a lot of factories, like every time. And so basically here I'm just trading and and I literally had like nothing prepared except for just making a lot of tanks just like he did but I talked with one of my friends after the first round and he was like just 
just literally make Paris impenetrable. I mean, that's like one of the only ways you can win. And so I tried doing that, and I did, but um, the main thing was I still needed the factories. And factories are not all in Paris, they're in other cities. And he's gonna use auto capture with his tanks, and his tanks are eventually gonna get there. So I definitely needed either an infantry divisions to either attack or defend my other cities because I wasn't gonna go through like that. So the aircraft carrier was just too good, and I knew that my navy wasn't gonna be able to stop it. So like there was barely any, there was literally no point in trying to, and his navy was really helping with, was really helping him. So I, around this point we were gonna declare war, and I just put some artillery there right next to my infantry divisions. They were either gonna take up some of the tanks that were gonna attack me, but this time he still made that many tanks. I divided half of my 8,000 tanks from Paris to either try and attack or something like that, but they were still not enough, and the anti, the anti, the aircraft carrier was still just too good, and he already went through, he killed all my infantry, and he was already going through there, and now I started to kill the tanks that were trying to get my factories, because I really needed the factories, one for economy, and two to keep my tanks alive. Um, here, I can, it's still going, I'm still going, he killed my artillery from there, and then he starts doing that, he starts trying to flank my tanks, but they make it out alive, because I had the defense general, I think, um, so here he goes again, and I killed all of his tanks, and then somehow he comes with like 4,000 more tanks or something like that, like, every so, every so often I check, like, how much has, does he still have? And he, like, I don't know how he still has this much. One, he has an anti, anti, an aircraft carrier. Two, this amount of, this amount of tanks. I mean, his economy must be crazy, but you know, I can't fault him for doing this well against me and bringing me like this, like at this situation. So I really couldn't, counter anything more then he got rid of my artillery and then he took Paris and that was the end of the round and the end of the tournament for myself so yeah here are my thoughts about the tournament and how it went and how I liked it so this tournament was really cool. I met really, really nice people. The tournament is still going to continue, and it's, it's still going through as as you're watching. I'm not going to spoil anything. You can go and wait for Bratificus to make a huge video about the whole tournament the, what for, like, every round and what happened. I'm not going to say anything because I'm not going to take away any of his credit. So, yeah, the tournament was really fun. It was really cool to be doing this with all their YouTubers and multiple people and I've met them and I've become friends with them and yeah best of luck to Doge and every other person that is still in the tournament um hopefully you can win it for yourself and but yeah that's the end of the video please do subscribe and like the video because it really helps a lot with my channel and we're trying to hit 420 subs by the end of the year. Can we do it? Can we not? We'll see. <laughs> so yeah, goodbye.